Nicola Dahlgren and I'm back for another Facebook Live. I didn't do it last week. Um, my husband had knee surgery, like I said, I think last time. He's fine, but since he can't watch the kids, it kind of throws off when I can do my live chats. But I am back now. I am sorry I am one or two minutes late, but I have this phone tripod and it just like keeps weeble wobbling, so I had to spend an extra minute or two figuring that out. But I'm going to take a sip of coffee and we're going to dive in. I only got like one question before this live um, live chat, so we really don't have too many to answer, but I do have some news to talk about. Um, yeah, so if you are here, uh, tell me where you're from and tell me what you are doing for the 4th of July or if you even celebrate the 4th of July. I mean, if you don't live in the U.S., you might not. So just let me know what your weekend plans are then and where you're from. I'm going to take a drink and then we're going to jump right in. And of course, my first drink and I spill on myself, down my face, onto my pants. But it's okay because secret, I'm wearing sweatpants so it doesn't really matter anyway. Okay, so I will start out with our Disney dialogue question. If you don't know what that is, it's a question that I ask you guys every day or every time I do a Facebook chat so I can just kind of hear your point of view. And I don't want to be narcissistic, but the question is kind of related to my videos, which I know, like, isn't even fair. But my question is, is that I've been doing these character videos on YouTube. i got to remember the camera's right there. I've been doing these character videos on YouTube where I talk about different Disney characters because that's something that I find interesting, so I thought maybe some other people might. And I've done three or four of them, and I'm just wondering, is that something I should continue? Because I make these videos for you. I want to see things that you're interested in, or else I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna film something that you don't want to see. So my question is, do you like that character series? If no, be completely honest with me. I want to know the truth. My feelings will not be hurt. And tell me, what videos do you want me to film about? What strikes your interest? What do you think is interesting to watch? Let me know what videos you want to see on our YouTube page. And if you have not been to our YouTube page, it's just Touring Plans, please subscribe. We just did a 10,000 uh, subscriber giveaway a few weeks ago. So we do do giveaways um, at some point. So yeah, let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to catch up on comments and hopefully my phone won't topple over because that has happened before. All right. Uh, Madison, Alabama. Lori said that. Not sure what she's doing yet. Kim saying hello from Kong, Hong Kong. I think you've joined us before, so it's good to see you again. Um, Brandy, uh oh, scroll. I have that same coffee cup. Okay, all right. You guys want to see it? It's the Starbucks ones that you can only get at the parks. I'm total sucker for them. I have Epcot and Magic Kingdom. Um, yeah, those are the only two. Cause I think I was waiting for Hollywood Studios until you know they change whatever they're gonna change with them. Uh, you know, it's Toy Story Land and Star Wars Land, and then Animal Kingdom, I just haven't been there in a while. Um, Amy, hello from Colorado, going to the mountains for Independence Day. I wish I could say something like that, like, oh, what are you doing for the 4th? <laughs> just going to the mountains. No, what am I doing? I'm going uh, to where our parents live, and we have a lot of family down there, so we're going to celebrate with them. I'm so excited. My kids I love their cousins, and I love seeing my family. I'm, I'm such a family person, so I'm like really looking forward to it. And I gotta remember to bring chips, salsa, and dips. So don't you guys let me forget. That's what I have to bring. Uh, Lisa from Virginia. We are headed to Pittsburgh to celebrate the fourth. I'm trying to go see more, and it won't let me. There we go. Um, going to Pittsburgh. With the friends who always go to Disney with us, we will be doing some Disney planning for a December trip. Oh my gosh, that's so much fun. What a great way to spend the 4th talk about Disney. It's like the best ever. And I will actually be talking about what Disney is doing for the 4th as well. So um, that kind of goes perfectly with what we're talking about. Malcolm, hi from Kent. Dustin, what do you talk about on the character shows? Good question. I should have covered that. Um, so I've covered, you know, I try to cover a mix of characters that you know you might know new characters characters that people are like what's the big idea i just talked about duffy the disney bear because i personally had no idea why duffy was so like popular i didn't get it so i talked about that i've talked about elena of avalor and the lion guard which are two new sets of characters on disney jr so me having toddlers you know that was something i thought 
while I watch these shows all the time, I should probably talk about it. And then I've talked about the three caballeros. I just tell you who they are, where you'll find them in the parks. That's a really important thing that I talk about is where you'll find them, you know, where they're available for character meets. Um, yeah. So thank you for asking about that. And again, let me know if you like that series, if you don't, or what series you want me to do next because I get a lot of my ideas from you guys because I want to cater to you. Holly, hello from Michigan. Holly, I feel like I've seen, seen you here before and Tom too as well. Hello. Colleen, hello from the beach. Oh my gosh, amazing. Cam, bring guacamole too. Tom, that requires actually making guacamole, which... I do make good guacamole. I do. But we'll see if I have time. That's a good idea, though. I should just do it, shouldn't I? I should. Chris, hi from Indiana, celebrating our son's seventh birthday on the 4th of July. Happy birthday to your son. Play the happy birthday song, the, the, the old Disney one. Do you guys remember it from, like, 1983? The happy birthday, happy birthday. Let me know. They played in the Disney stores, too. I just downloaded it, like, four days ago. It's a good one. I'm full of energy and I've had like two sips of coffee. Marlene from Boston. My husband was just in Boston. He loved it. He came back and said I could totally live there. I'm just like talking about myself. I haven't even talked about anything on my list. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, Gemma's from Indiana too. Duffy is huge in Japan, Kim Sang says. Yes, um, he actually like started his popularity there. I have the video if you guys want to go watch it. It came out this past Tuesday. Basically, he debuted here. It didn't do very well, so um, they took him to Japan and really pushed, pushed the marketing hard. That's all I'm going to talk about because you kind of see the video. Cliffhanger. Um, Tom said the new Rapunzel show is pretty solid. My daughter loves it. Can't wait for DuckTales. I am really liking the Rapunzel show. It's, um, oh, what's it called? I think it's just called Rapunzel the Series. It's on the Disney Channel. My daughter loves it. We just got her the little stuffed plush Rapunzel. It's very good and the music's good and Mandy Moore is in it. Like the original characters are. And um, the guy who plays Flynn, which I'm drawing a blank, but I love him. He reminds me of my husband. And DuckTales! DuckTales, ooh. I'm just making a goober of myself, but I am very excited for all these new shows. They're like bringing back all these great things. Like they're bringing back the 90s, guys. I'm here for it. Disney used to have a mass on property, I don't think that they do anymore. How do you get to it and where do you go to mass on Sunday? Joe, that's a great question. Gosh, I know they used to as well. Was that at the Floridian? Where was that at? Um, they used to have a church service at Walt Disney World. And if you guys know, if they still do that, let me know. Um, um, I have my computer by. And in case I didn't say this already, whenever you ask me a question and I don't know, I will either defer to you guys who are watching because you guys know more than me and I always go back after the stream and answer any questions. I always do the research because I think it's important to admit if you don't know something and I think it's even more important to research if you don't know the answer and then to share it, to share the, the wealth of knowledge. Um, if this was Brian, he knows the answers to everything. He's like this whiz when it comes to Disney. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm not quite there yet. But Joe, I will answer that question, or hopefully someone in the comments will, but I will get back to you. Um, and then they have tons of services off property. I know that if, you're, um, if you took the Disney Magical Express, it might be harder for you to get off property, but I know that when I went there with my band and choir, we went two times in high school, we found a mass in the surrounding area both times. So, they're everywhere. Holly said, um, I'll need to check out the videos to see where to find the characters. I also, um, I think I have a playlist, but, um, I'll update that with this Duffy one. Let's see. Jay, hello from South Carolina, home of the NCAA football championships. I am planning on doing a video, not that this really has to do with football, but I'm thinking more sports. I'm thinking about doing a video on the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex. Is that something you would be interested in? Because let me know. I really want an excuse to wear a jersey. So let me know if you think that'd be interesting or if you have questions. Uh, Tom, before ever after, that's what the Rapunzel one is called. Um, are your character videos on YouTube? Jim wants to know. Yes. Go to our YouTube page. I think it's like slash touring plans or just type in touring plans. Brian uploads... I want to say twice a week, sometimes three times, and he is like famous for his map videos. He does an amazing job with them. He, um, he's really good with like uh, park strategy and when a new procedure happens or they're doing like the new Magic Kingdom uh, rope drop when they did that. 
he um, he does a great job explaining in the park stuff and he also does news on Wednesdays on Tuesdays typically I um, I talk about you know um, trip planning basics I talk about I, I switch my series around you know I talk about um, attractions around Walt Disney World so if you have a ride or an attraction that you want me to cover leave that in the comments I do the character series I talk about the resorts so that is what I do and then Brian does the news and then um, and then a Friday video which he tends to change up but those map videos that he does are very popular all right what do we got Lisa said we will be going to mass at the church in celebration Florida there is a Christmas mass at the contemporary contemporary but I think that's the only time. Thank you, Lisa, for answering that question. I really appreciate it. Um, Jay, I would like to see a video on that ESPN area of Disney. You got it. Um, and have you guys been to the restaurant on the boardwalk? I think it's ESPN Zone. So nice, especially, you know, if you're a sports fan and you just need to take a break from Disney. It's where my husband goes whenever he needs a break because he's kind of a Disney curmudgeon and, like, gets sick of it pretty quick. So I'll be like, just go to the ESPN zone, get a burger. There's like even TVs in the bathroom. So you can just kind of like decompress. It's a great place for him to go. Um, Spring Jewel says that, um, yeah, ESPN info would be nice. Uh, I didn't even know it was there until we went to Disney Springs and ended up in their parking lot. Yeah, I mean, I've already kind of started researching for it because... I am not a super sports person. I grew up with three brothers who all did sports, which is like shameful that I don't know a lot. But I do jujitsu, so do I get a little bit of street cred there? I don't know. And I do yoga. That's about as far as it goes. Uh, okay, so let's answer Sarah's question. This is the question I did uh, get yesterday. We're still in early stages of planning. Where would you recommend a group of six, including one kid and one Disney adult, stay on grounds and this is something that you guys can definitely help answer Sarah's staying uh, saying that she's with a family of six and she wants to know where she should stay you know with that big of a family and I my answer it's very tricky to answer these questions because it all depends on your price point it really does you know um you would be most comfortable in like a two bedroom villa, but those are expensive. And I completely understand that if you're a DVC member, that's, you know, that changes things. Um, but those two bedroom villas sleep up to eight people. I think even like the deluxe studio sleeps five, which, you know, you have one more person than that, which is why I say the two bedroom. But uh, the reason I point that out is because you'll have a ton of room and a kitchen and a fridge and all that stuff. And um, everyone can sleep comfortable. You can kind of spread yourself out. But I also know that that's not possible for a lot of people, so I wanted to give other options. Um, if our preferences for each category are, for a value resort, we really like Pop, um, Pop Century. I need a drink, hang on. Pop Century, for a value suite, we really prefer um, Art of Animation. That's great. And did you guys know that the values kind of have those family suites where they're just a little bigger? If you didn't know that, that was something new that I found out, well, I guess like a year ago now. But it's something that I didn't know people knew. So I wanted to point that out, that the values do have family suites. I mean, they're a little bigger, so a little more room. I mean, they're not going to be huge, but worth pointing out. Uh, from moderate, we definitely suggest Port Orleans French Quarter. It is my favorite moderate. Um... It's small and compact and everything's close by. They have like the best beignets ever. But if um, you're looking for more rooms, definitely uh, Port Orleans Riverside. They also have a restaurant and a lounge, although I think French Quarter has a lounge too. They do. Uh, but they have a restaurant and you just have more food options. Uh, but for sure, moderate Port Orleans French Quarter. Second place, Port Orleans, Riverside. And I do have a video coming in the next week or two on Riverside, so stay tuned. Uh, let's answer some more questions. Let's see what we got here. Chris, saying, staying at Caribbean Beach Resort beginning of September, where is a good location to request? We need to be close to whichever bus picks up first because our son has autism and doesn't wait long before getting upset. Um, this Facebook chat does not let me see the rest of your message, but I will answer what I read. So we have 
a room finder. Have I done a video on that? I don't think I have. Touring Plans has a room finder that you can utilize and basically you can search for a room based on how close it is to the lobby, how close it is to transportation, how quiet it is, you know, um, what floor it's on. And I do have a video coming. So if you head to our Touring Plans page, sign up for um, access and uh, check out our room finder, you can actually um, pick the exact room that would fit your needs for you and your family and your son. So if you wanna be close to transportation, that is a filter option for you. Um, and then if you have um, access or a subscription, I believe, you can uh, submit a room request through us and give a very detailed, lengthy um, request that we will submit before you arrive. And success is not guaranteed, but we've had really good luck with it just because you can be so specific where if you go through Disney, you can't say exactly the room you want. I know that's a really long answer, um, but it all comes down to that room finder. It's very helpful and you can completely tailor it to your needs and it shows the room views. So if you want to see if you're going to be looking at a parking lot, you know, that's you can see we have pictures. So very neat. Um, thank you for the question, Chris. I think that was a really good one. Lisa, so happy we discovered you. We've used your planning tools for our two trips. Um, I'm now planning for a group of 13 and two families. Lisa, did you did you message me right before this? Um, Facebook only lets me see we were last in Walt Disney World December 2015 and we are going. And that's all I see. So can you please uh, message me the rest of that? I know that's like so inconvenient, I apologize. But I'm glad that you're enjoying using our tools. Um, Planning for a group of 13. Okay, I think I do remember seeing this question like right before I started this theme. You know what? I wonder if I can look this up. Uh, Joy, hi Joy, love your videos. Thank you so much. Dustin, love French Quarter. Isn't it the best? I stayed there um, as like a baby moon with my husband when we were pregnant with our daughter and it was like bliss. And I love jazz. I love it. I love singing it. I love listening to it. We always have it on in the background, different kinds of it. Um, I personally really like big band and early jazz, but it plays, that's why I love the boardwalk and French Quarter is because that music is always playing and it just is like so cozy and comforting to me. So many good things to say about French Quarter and the fact that it's small is amazing because you're close to everything. You're close to the lobby, you're close to the gift shop, you're close to the food, which is most important when you're pregnant. Um, and then you're a boat ride or a 15 minute walk away to Riverside, which effectively doubles your options of everything. Um, What's a good room to request for standard room at Animal Kingdom Lodge? Michelle wants to know. That is a great question. I have never stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge. So if you have, please help Michelle out. Um, Michelle, I will go and look for a good answer for you after the fact. I know it's like, why do you guys watch these live chats when I can't give an answer? But I honestly, I just love chatting with you. And I do do my best to provide an answer when I know it and um, after the fact. Uh, my family is going to Disney World for the first time, Joy said, in August. We're so excited and your videos are so helpful. Joy, oh my gosh, you will love it. I just banged on the table. I'm sorry if that was loud. And I'm sweating now because I'm getting so excited. You're going to have a great time. Oh my gosh, my, um, my brother and my sister-in-law are planning a trip, but don't tell anyone because their kids don't know. And I think they're going to go in the fall. They're either going to go in October or December because my brother's schedule changes. And oh, they have six kids. I understand why you're so excited, Joy, because I'm helping her plan it, and it's like I'm going. I'm that excited. Hi, Kathy from New York. Lynn, love the room finder. It's seriously the best. Lynn, thank you for giving, um, why am I drawing a blank? Thank you for giving your thoughts about it. It is cool. It's really cool. Like, I love what I do because I get to research our website and I, I get to delve deep into it and kind of see what it, even more what it has to offer. And I do use these things for myself, and I have great luck with it. So I'm not just saying it because I work for them, although I do love my job. Uh, Amy loves Port Orleans. Nice boat ride launch. Goes to Magic Kingdom, I believe. Port Orleans goes to, uh, the, the boats go to Disney Springs, um, which is really nice because, you know, like Disney Springs parking isn't super fun. But um, you can take a boat ride there if you're at the Port Arlene Resorts and then take buses to the rest of the parks. Um, Lila, can you use the room request form for Fort Wilderness? 
because I know it's not included in the room finder. That's a little tricky because, you know, they are campsites. So um, that would make it a little harder to request. Let me check with our customer service and I will let you know. But if it's not there, then um, I don't know if you can do it. Yeah, for the room finder. I was thinking, oh, oh, okay, I'm rereading your question. Let me take, I'll take a look at that. Sorry. Confusing myself and you guys. You're just sitting me here, have a brain fart. Watching me sit here, have a brain fart. Oh my gosh, need another drink of coffee. Okay, Kate, what is your favorite hotel? I've only stayed at Saratoga Springs Resort on site. Okay. Guys, that's like a big question. It's like asking like which child do I love more? And it is... Okay, my favorite moderate, we all know, is Port Orleans French Quarter. And um, values, I've only stayed at one value. I've only stayed at All Star Music. So I can't really give an opinion on that. But I have walked around a lot of them, including Art of Animation. And that is the one that I want to stay at. I think that that looks like so much fun. I love the theme. I love how nice it looks. And um, But keep in mind that Pop Century is having a refurbishment of all their rooms. And they look really chic. Like they're giving off contemporary resort vibes. Let me know if you've seen the pictures of Pop Century, the new rooms, because I'm kind of loving it. That simplistic but chic, classic look. Um, and as far as deluxe resorts, I really, really love beach club and the boardwalk and that's when it comes down to like picking my favorite child because I love both for different reasons. I love the boardwalk because I mean it's the first deluxe resort I stayed at. I love 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 being on the boardwalk. I, I just love being next to the busy, busyness you know what I mean like I love sitting on the balcony outside the Bellevue lounge and just watching like people watching on the boardwalk. I love strolling along the boardwalk at night with the lights hanging and the street performers and everyone clapping and the music playing. You know, I'm not crazy about their pool at all. I mean, the pool just isn't that great, but um, I love the atmosphere of the boardwalk. Love it. And then Beach Club, I love the rooms. It's very serene. It's almost like sleeping in a spa because everything's very tranquil. And like, if you leave your door open, the breeze comes through and you can have the fan on and it's just, it's very... It's like very serene and tranquil. That's like that like describes it. I love the color theme, and um, I love the the pool. I think the amenities are really nice. I mean, Stormalong Bay, like amazing pool, best pool at Walt Disney World. So those are the reasons I like both both of them. And then if we're talking about DVC, whew, I'd say probably right now my favorite is Bay Lake Tower because it's very um, you know it's low it's centrally located. I really enjoy that. It's it's very nice. Um, Obviously, I mean, it's like pretty new. I mean, yeah. Um, and I like that you can walk to Magic Kingdom. I like that from Magic Kingdom, you can hop on the monorail, transfer at the transportation ticket center, and then go to Epcot and from there walk to Hollywood Studios. I like all that. I like how located it is. Um, and that's the same reason I like uh, Beach Club and the Boardwalk is because it's the same thing in reverse. You know, you are within walking distance to two parks, but you can take the monorail to Epcot. I need to take a breath because that was a very long answer. Thank you for keeping up with me because I talk very fast. I'm sorry. Um, Lila, also your dining reservation finder has already come in handy. What a great tool. Can we just talk about that reservation finder? I, I talk about it all the time. Actually, did I film a video on that already? And yeah, it's going to be up in a few weeks. I think I did talk about that. Yeah, so you'll hear me say this again. I had a trip in two weeks and just like having little kids and it's like oh my gosh my brain is just everywhere and I had not booked dining reservations so two weeks before the trip I put into our reservation finder be our guest and chef Mickey's and I got both of them for six people for six people be our guest okay it was an 8 10 in the morning reservation which ended out like I ended up I would totally do that again because you get out before Magic Kingdom opens and you can get right in line for whatever attraction you want. I think we did like Peter Pan's flight. Then we walked across the street and went to um, It's a Small World. And then we went on to Pirates. So I know I kind of went off on a tangent there. And I burped. I got in my Facebook chat burp like I always do. Sorry guys, so rude. But Dining Reservation Finder, amazing. 
Basically, if you don't know what that was, because here I am talking about it and not everyone knows what it is, is that you put in, through our Touring Plans website, um, you put in the restaurant, you put in your dates, you either put in the meal, like breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or you put in the time and then add your email address or your cell phone number or both and we will text and email you when a reservation for that time at that restaurant becomes available. And like I said, I've had great luck with it. I got a result for Chef Mickey's within a day and I think Be Our Guest within a couple days. A lot of people like it. I definitely suggest checking it out. And um, again, you just need access to our touringplans.com subscription, like basic access, just so you know. Um, Lisa, we were, okay, thank you for, um, resending your question. We were last in Walt Disney World and we were going again, the 16th to the 24th. We have six day hopper tickets, two questions. When will the most reliable early magic hours be released and how much time is needed? I remember your question now. You sent this, um, I read it right before our stream here. So you want to know, is Animal Kingdom a full day park now? Because, it used to be kind of a half day. You are going at a very busy time, although I would have said that for people coming during the summer this year and attendance has been low. So um, I'm just gonna go with the whole assumption that it's gonna be busy because you're going right before Christmas. You have the six day park hopper. When is the most when will the most reliable extra magic hours be released? Um you know when I was looking recently for extra magic hours in like November. I didn't see them yet so I would give it another couple months before looking um, unless they... yeah I'm thinking about the crowd calendar. I'm thinking in my brain. I want to give you a good answer from my little knowledge up here in my brain. Yes, I don't remember seeing um, reliable dates when I was looking recently for November so I would give it another couple months, maybe two or three. Um, but it should be there by the time you are planning your dining reservations. I mean, you'd think so at least. But again, help me out with this if you are at a computer and can look up the dates for Lisa right now or if you have any knowledge. Um, otherwise, I will just go back at the end and answer your question. Um, and then how much time is truly needed at Animal Kingdom? So, yes. It is, like, people would say it was a half-day park and now it's a whole day because, you know, they're extending the hours, they have rivers of light, and most importantly, Pandora, the world of Avatar, is beautiful at night. You know, it, if you only have the option to go during the day, then go during the day, but with those bioluminescent plants, you know, that is just absolutely stunning to look at at night. So if you can stay to experience both, I definitely would suggest that. that. Otherwise, if you just want to spend a day there, one day, since you do have a six-day park hopper, and then a night there, another night, that is also another option. And then, um, yeah, then you can kind of adjust your fast pass reserva reservations accordingly. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could break it up, or if you just want to just spend the whole day there, you know, I'm all for afternoon siestas. I'm all for going back in the afternoon for three hours to take a nap or swim or just relax because it does get hot, but you're going during a good time of year. So personally, I would take a break in the afternoon or go a morning one day, a night another day to break it up, but you could go the full day if you wanted. Um, let, let Lisa know your thoughts too if you've been recently because I have not been to Disney World since, oh, I guess June 1st. But I didn't go to Animal Kingdom, so I don't think it counts. Okay, Heidi, uh, we stayed at uh, Animal Kingdom Lodge a few years ago. We loved it because the standard rooms are closer to the bus stops. Of course, there are no animal views, and they made the bal balcony, so you're just looking down at... And then it doesn't let me see the rest of it. This is like the worst, but at least you guys can see what Heidi's saying. So you read that, um, because I can't. It's like, come on, Facebook Live. Like, I'm trying to answer questions as best I can, and I can't even see the whole question. Okay, all right, scrolling down some more. Which rooms are renovated at Pop Century? I know, I think I think two buildings have been completed so far, and um, you can look, I'm pretty sure you can look, yeah, yeah, you could probably search to see which ones, but what you can also do is you can just request a new room. You can start booking those refurbished rooms, I think in the, starting this month you could start doing that. So the people at Disney will know when you go to book. Um, so just call and ask them because I know it was starting this month that you could book those rooms. Um, 
Yeah, but I think it's about two buildings are completely finished because they're going building by building with those pop century refurbishments. Kate's in the UK and you've been seven times since 1986. Love Walt Disney World and terrain plans. Kate, I love the UK. I spent uh, about four months or a semester in Winchester in 2010 and I loved it. I want to go back. I haven't been back since and it just makes me sad. I really, I really love that area. I love the people. Um, and Winchester uh, is in England, for those of you who don't know, but I went to Ireland as well. The people there are so nice. Like, people in London are nice. People in Ireland are just, like, joyful and super happy. But I love, oh my gosh, I loved living in England. It was amazing. How far in advance should I put a room request in? I mean, really, Carol, you can do it now if you're talking through a website, through the Touring Plans website, and we will submit your request five about five days before you check in. If you do it through the Disney website, it's basically when you're allowed to check in, you can make that request. But I wouldn't suggest doing that if you're using our, our room request feature, because like I said, you can make a more detailed request using our feature, where Disney, you know, you can't say the exact room you want. And do not do both, because if you do the one through Disney, like after you do our room request, it cancels ours and only goes through the Disney one. So, um, that's worth noting. Uh, Lisa used to do a full day at Hollywood Studios, but now I'm thinking only a half day. Thoughts? You know, it depends what you want to accomplish there, like how much you want to do at Hollywood Studios. Um, so, like, yeah, I mean, kind of like you pointed out, there's, there's a lot of refurbishments going. There's not a ton of attractions that are open right now, so you could do it as a half day park. But it just depends if you want to see, um you know, the fireworks show, the Galactic Spectacular, or, you know, the Star Wars one, because I really want to see that. And then Pixar Live, uh, I'll talk about that too in a little bit. That's kind of new there. Uh, so it just depends what you want to do there and what your fast passes are for. You know, like if you want to wait in line for Tower of Terror and do fast passes at Animal Kingdom, or if you want to do your fast passes at Hollywood Studios. So it just kind of depends what you want to do there. But I'd say right now you could manage in a half day. It's just, I mean, it's what happens with refurbishments. Uh, Lynn Marie said, the new pop rooms look fabulous. I love that they have the Murphy bed table combo that um, Art of Animation has. Yes, and Riverside in the Bayou area also has Murphy beds. Um, I know that Fort Wilderness used to as well. Do they still? I don't remember. But those Murphy beds are so nice. They, own, they fit more comfortably a child than an adult. But it's just like so fun. It's so no like it's like a novelty for the kids to like come into a room and be like, okay, time to pull the bed down. Like they just think that's awesome. I still think that's cool. Uh, Carol, I like the new Pop Century rooms. Hope we can stay in one in December. Me too. Uh, Don, we have only stayed at Grand Floridian and Polynesian. Was pricing a trip for next February, but the rooms are running high for deluxe resorts the week we're looking at. Would you have a recommendation for a non-deluxe? And then that's all it lets me see. Let's see if I click on it. Sorry. Nope, it doesn't let me see the rest of it. It just lets me block you, and I don't want to block you, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, well, I assume you said, would you have a recommendation for non-deluxe resort? Yes, and I um, I kind of mentioned earlier in this stream um, Port Orleans French Quarter or Port Orleans Riverside. Uh, Riverside is more spread out. It's a lot bigger, a lot more walking, so that's kind of why we suggest French Quarter, because it's a lot smaller. Uh, Megan, the new pop rooms look so nice. Almost wishing I didn't pay for a preferred room because I'd like to request one of the new rooms. I mean, you you could change your reservation. I guess, Megan, it kind of just depends when you go or, like, when your trip is. Like, if it's super soon or whatever. Um, but, yeah. 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 I know it's tricky, isn't it? I don't even know if you could stay in the new rooms yet. I say, I, Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can because I saw pictures of someone in one. And, um... And back to Dawn's question, whenever you're going in February, I assume it would be around a um, marathon, and that might be why it's so high. I always go in February. This is the only year I didn't love going in February. It's not very busy, and um, I mean, yeah, the weather is normally pretty nice, but I hope you have a good time. Uh, just wrapping up that question, Kate, thanks for the response. You're welcome. Carol, I'm having trouble making dining reservations for December. I'll have to try the reservation finder. Yes, do it. I swear, it's really helpful. And, you know, it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's that last ditch effort because it's not. I mean, like, I would probably do that first personally because I just don't want to be up at seven in the morning to make reservations and being either on the phone or, 
trying to book here. It's just crazy, you know? But if it's a reservation that you really want, like Cinderella's Royal Table, I totally understand getting up early for that. Uh, Christy King, do you know if Pixar Live Music at Hollywood Studios will be continued this fall? Really hoping to see it, and do you think Jingle Bell Jingle Bam will return? Pixar Live, because it started pretty recently, I would assume it would go through the fall. It seems to be doing really well, and the Disney Parks blog is actually promoting it. They're doing, today at um, 7.55 Eastern Time, they're doing a live stream of it. So um, if it's something you want to check out before you decide to fit it in your plans, that's today, 7.55 Eastern Time. And if you go to Twitter and check out the hashtag Disney Parks Live, um, you can kind of see it through then. Otherwise, I'm sure you can go to the Disney Parks blog and see it there as well. But um, for those of you who don't know, it's called The Music of Pixar Live, A Symphony of Characters. And it's just, it showcases the music from our favorite Pixar music, like uh, movies. So like, you know, during the up portion, you know, from the movie up, I'm going to be crying watching it because it's like the saddest Pixar movie ever next to the Jesse scene in Toy Story 2. There's, oh my gosh, Pixar movies get me every time. I'm just saying. And um, like I said, Disney, uh, located at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And Kate said, definitely a full day at Animal Kingdom at least. So it's good. To, I, I'm glad that you guys are sharing your comments because I'm one person. I love to hear your thoughts. Um, Lisa said, we'll definitely need a midday resort break. Yeah, when it just comes to kids, it's just it's just easier, you know, to avoid meltdowns that way. But if your kids are hardcore and they can go the whole day, I mean, do it. Um, Gen Jennifer, oh, hi, Jennifer. I remember seeing you on one of our last streams as well. We received crowd level updates last night. I did too. Um, all days for our end of August trip have gone up. What affects these changes? Are there suddenly higher crowds expected? You know, it could be, I mean, it could be a number of things. It, it could be, you know, because of the Halloween party, because they're starting it a tad earlier this year, so people might want to come a little earlier before it, because I think it starts like the 31st or something. You know, it could be that we were just adjusting our crowd lever, crowd levels overall. It could be because of Pandora with those weights. You know, there could be a lot of reasons, but you're still going at a good time. I mean, if I were to suggest a time during the summer to go to Walt Disney World, as close to late August as you can get is ideal, you know, when you're talking about high crowds. So um, those are my two cents. Megan, so happy the summer crowds have been lower. We are doing a summer trip for the first time in a few weeks, so that's welcomed news. Have a great time. Remember to drink lots of water. It's so hard to do that at Disney because you're walking and you're busy and you know, just bring that water bottle and fill up where you can. That's what I had to do this last trip because it was so stinking hot. All right, Jacqueline, there should be a more button that you can click on to see the rest of the comment. Yes, thank you, Jacqueline, for pointing that out because, like, how am I supposed to answer your questions if I can't see the whole question? It's driving me bananas. And then I look even more unprofessional because I have to say I don't know. It's not like I don't know. I have to say it in that situation because I can't see your question. Um... But honestly, I mean, sometimes I just don't know the answer. Tony loves the reservation finder. It's never let me down in the past. Have two searches in now for December. I hope you have good luck with that, Tony. It's a great thing. Um, all right, Christy, what rooms would you recommend at the Grand Floridian for an outer building garden view? Again, that is a matter of going to our um, room finder and looking at those views. It's very nice because... It, you know, you, you filter in your requests if you want to, but it also gives you a picture of the entire resort, gives you an entire picture, and you can first click on the building. So if you want an outer building, you can push on the outer building, and then it brings you to every single room. You can click on every single room in that building, and you can see the views, and then you can read all of the criteria about it, or like all of the information about it, like, you know, the, the quietness level and, um, you know, stuff like that. So that's when I defer to the room view because that way you can, you know, I can just assume what you're talking about, but then you can really like look at it, something tangible that you can see. You can see the building you want, click on that. You can see the room you're interested in, click in that, click on that. Oh my gosh, this is the thing about being in a family thread is that you're constantly getting everyone's text throughout. So like, I'm sorry if like I'm freezing, but I'm just, I keep getting these texts. 
Um, Carol said Fort Wilderness no longer had Murphy beds. I thought that was the case when I stayed at Fort Wilderness. It was the 90s and they did do a refurb, which looks really nice, but I thought they got rid of them too. So thank you, Carol, for pointing that out. Pamela, uh, reservation finder is in testing. Update, please. You know, it kind of always says that it's in testing because we're always trying to improve it. So, um, it still works. It's still effective, but that's why it says it's in testing because we're always working on it you know, to try to make it as reliable as we can. Um, any word on when Candlelight Processional at Epcot will be released? I'm kind of surprised that it, I, I thought it would have been released now, but if not, within the next month for sure, within July or August, the Candlelight Processional dates will be announced if they haven't already. And the acts are always subject to change, but I know my girl Jody Benson, love her. I know she's been doing it every year since like 2012. And, um... Neil Patrick Harris does it a lot. You guys have some great people doing the Candlelight Processional. It's my bucket list goal to see it one of these times. So I just got it. But it's always um, around Christmas time. And I don't normally go during that time. Don, thanks so much. I was just looking at February since we did end of January. Crowds were awesome. Can you uh, tell me about the Halloween party? And you've done the Christmas party. A Halloween party is very fun. I preferred the Christmas party, which a lot of people have the opposite uh, opposite opinion. But I think it's a little biased because when I went to the Halloween party, it was just pouring rain. And the Headless Horseman couldn't come out to lead the parade, so that was a bummer. But the parade is so much fun. I actually own that soundtrack for it. And my daughter, if we're not listening to the Disney Christmas music, we're, ta we're listening to the Halloween soundtrack. That, that's my life every day in the car. It's one or the other. Halloween party is so much fun. People love it because you see a lot of Disney characters that, that you wouldn't see normally. You know, like Sally and Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Sparrow, The Seven Dwarves, you know, um, people like that. You know, you, you see characters like that. And you have dance parties with the Disney villains like Dr. Facilier and the evil queen, but she's a witch in that party. And, um, you know, you have a dance party with them. Like, I literally danced with Dr. Facilier, and it was awesome. It was so cool. So a lot of people like it for that reason. Um, you can go trick-or-treating, so make sure you bring a bag to collect candy. Um, they also have those Mickey O-lanterns that light up that you can use as a bucket. I think I bought one of those for my daughter at the time. And, yeah, you can go trick-or-treating, but they also have allergy uh, accommodating, like, foods that you can get, you know, like if you have allergies or are gluten-free, they have food options for you as well. And that's the same with the Christmas party. But yeah, Halloween party, you have trick-or-treating, you have an amazing, amazing parade. Happy Hollow Wishes, which I'm wondering, is it even going to be called that now that Wishes is over? Stay tuned, I don't know. Um, can you, okay, I got a phone call, that scared me. Are you guys still with me? Tell me if you're with me, I want to make sure I'm still live here. Um, but the Disney characters dress up in costumes, so it's just super duper fun. I would definitely suggest going, but like I said, my heart is with the game. My dad keeps calling me. This is... Dad, I'm sorry. I'm doing a Facebook Live. Um, but yes, I love the Christmas party. It's just very it's very joyful. We can talk about that more, too, if you want. Uh, Kim is taking 8- and 11-year-old boys for their second trip. We have seven day passes. Any can't-miss recommendations for things for your boys? Should we do two days at Animal Kingdom or Hollywood Studios? Um... Oh my gosh, definitely if they are into Star Wars, do the Jedi Training Academy. I don't know if that's still what it's called, but I would definitely, definitely do Jedi Training Academy. Um, my tips for that is to go right when the park opens because that is your best, best, best bet for getting your boys in. Um, other than that, yeah, like, um, it just depends what they're into. If they're into the animals and if they're into that sci-fi, you know, like with Pandora and Star Wars... Hit up Animal Kingdom, do all that. Um, gosh, cars, let's see, are there any cars things? Not really. Guys, help me out with this. I'm, I'm, I'm having a brain fart. Ooh, Test Track, though, at Epcot, they would love. Oh my gosh, that would be fun. Mission Space, if they don't get uh, two motion sickness, that's always super fun for your boys. Um, what are some other things? But yeah, the Star Wars things right now at Hollywood Studios, Star Tours, um, they have that area, uh, the Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater, that's always a nice one where you eat in cars and, you know, there's like a starry sky. There's so many great things. If they're daredevils, um, rock and roller coaster, Tower of Terror, all that stuff is so fun. 
Um, you could do two days at Animal Kingdom if you can't get fast passes for everything you want if the lines are too long. But, um, you know, with Expedition Everest, I just did a video on that. That's that's thrilling. And the queue is really fun to look at. It's very, there's a lot to stare at. Um, Cali River Rapids at Animal Kingdom. Oh my gosh. I could just go on and on. Any of those thrill rides are really, are really hitting um, my brain. And then Flight of Passage. If that, okay, so Flight of Passage. I just want to talk about this really quick. Um, I just want to make a few notes on it. Uh, Savannah Sanders, Sanders, who is a Touring Plans blogger, did an amazing article on it recently. Um, I just wanted to note that some people are getting claustrophobic on it, and some people are suffering from motion sickness. Um, the claustrophobia is kind of coming from the restraints, because you are kind of strapped in. Um, and I know that's been a little tricky for kids, so if you are doing Flight of Passage with kids, that's just something to keep in mind. Also, the fact that you're separate, like you're riding solo, because you're each on a ride vehicle. Um, like, you'll be able to touch your kid, but they're, they'll be kind of independent in their in their vehicle. So yeah, between the restraints and um, if they get motion sickness and then yeah, stuff like that. That's just something I wanted to point out quick. Kate, what's the new Magic Kingdom fireworks like? Indescribable. I mean, I know that doesn't help you at all. Indescribable. It is the most amazing fireworks display I've seen in my entire life ever. And I don't know how Disney will ever, ever top it. I have no idea how they will ever top it. They included every single factor and film that you can imagine. It is so detail oriented. Like I would honestly go as far as to say that the fireworks are on the back burner for this one. And it is all about the castle, the video mapping projections. It's like they just like are vacuum suctioned around the castle. They are so tight and they just make such good use of the castle turrets, you know, surrounding it. And oh my gosh, it's indescribable. Oh, I don't want to say don't watch it on YouTube, but it is just something you have to experience for yourself. It is unlike anything I've ever seen. Lynn Murray, Halloween party and food and wine start at end of August. That could bring higher crowds. It definitely could. Food and wine is like 75 days this year. It's, it's the longest they've ever done it. Uh, Lisa said the youngest in our group is 13. Um, so you And you still take a midday break with your 13 and 16 year old. I would too. It just... You don't realize how much you walk. I was at Magic Kingdom for like 12 hours the other day, the other day in June first, and I think we walked six miles, and you don't even realize how sore you are until the end of the day. Uh, Christy, so funny you mentioned the sad Jesse scene in Toy Story. I was in tears the first time I saw it. Yep, yep, and then I, how old was I when I saw it? I was older, and I think I still went back and played with my old toys after I saw the Jesse scene in Toy Story because I felt bad for my toys, and I just wanted them to know that I still love them. That's the kind of person I am, apparently. Uh, Catherine, welcome. What are crowd levels projected for 4th of July? 4th of July in the parks, especially Magic Kingdom, is normally pretty crazy. If you are going, I would definitely get fast passes. Um, you know, but it's just so up in the air right now with, you know, this lower crowd attendance. It's Just assume it's going to be crazy. And assume that if you watch the fireworks at Magic Kingdom, which are amazing, they're called Disney's Celebrate America, a 4th of July concert in the sky. Uh, that's done the 3rd and 4th um, of July at 9 p.m. And the fireworks actually like circle around you, which they also do at the Christmas party and probably some other times that I can't remember. Um, but it, that's, it's a great display, but expect to be packed together. And if you are gonna go, definitely get some fast passes. Um, Fast Pass Plus reservations for that. That's what I. That's what I have to say about that. Uh, Lacey, Christmas very. Uh, yeah, Mickey's very merry Christmas party is awesome. But Lacey is doing the Halloween party with your husband. Enjoy, dress up. It's fun. I think when I went, I was Wendy. My husband was me because he refused to put on tights to be Peter Pan. And then my daughter, she was about ten months old. She was Tinkerbell. But yeah, I definitely want to go again. I think that'd be great. And then we can bring our son this time. Uh, Alicia loved Halloween Walt Disney World. Sharon's still here. Hi, Sharon. Uh, thanks again, Don said. I agree. Christmas party is magical. It is. It's just joyful. It is. That's all I can say about it. It's just different from the Halloween party. It's still wonderful. Like I said, a lot of people love Halloween. Um, but my heart was stolen by the Christmas party. Uh, Chris has done both parties, and they prefer Halloween so much more. Going again in September. That's what I hear. You know, people love 
they love it and I think a lot of the reason is because of all those unique characters that you can meet and the fact that they're in costume because that's really cool I mean they're in costume like they're in different outfits for the Christmas party but it's not like they're dressed up like we are for Halloween okay um oh Don suggested the Indiana Jones spectacular whatever it's called for Kim's sons great idea Don that's a good one I didn't even think about that that's very fun too um do we know why Magic Kingdom is closing at 4.30 on November 30th? Not a Christmas party night. That is a great question. The only thing I could assume is if there's a private event. Because that's, I mean, that's why they close down the park. Sometimes they're for private events or if they're working on something. Um, but keep an eye on those dates because sometimes they change. Sometimes those times change. Disney always states that dates and people and times and attractions are subject to change, so keep looking at that. Um, otherwise, if you can answer Christy's question, uh, put that below. If we are not going to be in the park for fireworks for Happily, can we see enough from California Grill? You know, Lacey, you, you can watch the f fireworks from the California Grill, and I would have suggested you do that if it was Wishes, uh, because the California Grill views, oh my gosh, it's, it's spectacular. But because so much of the show is on the castle, and because I personally feel like the fireworks are on the back burner, I just wonder if you would experience it the same than if you were in the park. You can definitely watch it if you've already seen it, but if it's your first time, um, I would suggest entering Magic Kingdom. Otherwise, um, if you've seen it before, then from the Cali Grill is just fine. Kim wants to know, is it worth the cost to do one of the di dessert events just to get a preferred spot. You know, I I would say it just depends what's included. You know, like, for example, I know that they're going to do a frozen fireworks dessert party, and that's something that I want to do because I think that in addition to getting a good spot for the fireworks, I like what's included. You know, you get to go on the frozen ever after ride. I think you get to like meet Anna and Elsa, and they have lots of yummy desserts. So I look at that dessert party as a whole. I look at it as in addition to the seating, what you also get. So um, for that, you know, I would suggest looking at the different options for the fireworks, you know, looking at the different parks, seeing what's included and going from there. That is my personal opinion, but um, in the comments, give Kim what you think, you know, your opinion, because that's, that's why we do these things. Um, let's see. And Christy did confirm with Disney, and it's a 4.30 closing. That is so interesting. I don't want to look into that. Let's see, November 30th. Oh, that's my daughter's birthday. That's why they closed it down for her. Um, Don says it is worth to do the dessert parties, and she feels that they're worth it. Um, ooh, and Tinkerbell flew right over you. Oh, my gosh. So then there you go. That's the experience. I personally, like I said, want to do the Frozen one. Because uh, I think my daughter would enjoy it. But I'm so glad to hear that Dawn's sharing her experience with the Magic Kingdom one. Because I haven't done that. Let's see. Um, yes, Lynn Marie said the castle projections are a major part of Happily Ever After. Yeah, I just, you don't, you can't see that from Cali Grill. So that's why I would say be in the group. In the group. Uh, where would be great viewing but less crowded places to see Happily Ever After? Okay. So, for Wishes, I would have said the Main Street Railroad Station balcony. That is what I would have said. Um, now that Happily Ever After is so much more focused on the video projections, I don't know that I would have the same to say because I don't think you could see as much detail. But what I will say is that we were behind, okay, so you know the Walt statue with Mickey? We were behind that for sure. Pretty, I mean, not super far back. We weren't on Main Street. We were still in the hub. But I did not feel crowded, and that was in June. So that was a really good spot, I would think, um, to look. But if you really need the space, you know, check out the Main Street balcony um, where the railroad station is. Chris, uh, anyone have experience with the new Avatar ride as far as it being hard for bigger people? Is it about your legs, though, because of the restraints? So I did research this because I thought this question might come up, Chris, so I actually actually have an answer written down. I actually know something. Um, so because of the restraint, restraints, larger or taller people might not be able to ride. So I haven't seen a specific weight or a specific height mentioned, 
but um, yes, because of the restraints for taller or larger people, that's that's what I've been hearing. And um, I just want to point out that the test vehicle that they provide outside of the attraction is not the exact same one on the attraction. So if you fit on the test vehicle, you might get through the queue and get onto the attraction vehicle and you might not fit, which is really unfortunate and it's it's like kind of upsetting because it just like kind of adds to the sadness of not being able to experience it. You know, it's one thing if, you know, you don't think you can do it at all, but if you if it works on the test vehicle and you fit and then you go to the attraction and you don't, it's just like I don't know, it's just something that really bothers me about it. Uh, so I thought it was worth pointing out. And also the glasses are kind of loose fitting. So you might find yourself having to push your glasses up throughout the attraction. That in no ways diminishes the ride itself. It is amazing. It is emotional. It is beautiful. It is stimulating. Um, but those are the things that I'm just not really happy with personally. And the fact that it's not really accessible for everyone. Especially when the main character... An avatar is in a wheelchair. It just doesn't really make sense to me. Um, but that does not detract from the ride itself and how amazing it is. Um, Lynn Marie said, could be a private party or event. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Good question about the dessert party. Um, Lisa said, is it hard to, okay, uh, since we will be there at Christmas time, it is hard to swallow the $80 per person, but with six in our family, I think it's worth it. Um, has anyone done the fireworks, or the Star Wars dessert party? That is another one that sounds like a lot of fun because you do, it's all about the meeting the characters thing that I think is a draw for a lot of people. And is there Star Wars themed desserts? I can't remember, but you know, it's those kind of, that's what draws me to the dessert parties is the experience as a whole. It's what draws me to the Frozen one and to the Star Wars one because it's that like atmosphere and that experience. Um, oh, and Don said we have done that one as well, Kim. You get a good view, a Chewbacca mug, and interaction with the Stormtroopers. So yes, thank you for sharing that, Don. You are on top of this today. I'm loving it. Um, and Lynn Marie, Lynn Marie has also done the Star Wars dessert party back in November. I found it a bit disjointed and the preferred viewing area was awful. That's, that's kind of a bummer, bummer. Kate, which Walt Disney World attraction do you think is most underrated? I did a video series on this like a year and a half to two years ago. I think, was I even pregnant at that point with my son? I don't think so. Um, so are you thinking at Walt Disney World? Let's start with Magic Kingdom. I personally think, yes, the last floor is definitely underrated. I always find myself not wanting to do it, and then once I do, I laugh hysterically. And it is one of those things, I don't know why I like get into that mindset where I don't want to do it, but then I do, and it's so much fun. And also, everyone will disagree with me. No, not everyone. That's, that's me being dramatic. I still love Carousel of Progress. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if they think it's too long or boring or outdated. It was featured at like the New York World's Fair and brought to Walt Disney World. I think it's a classic. It's air conditioned. It's dark. It's a great way to get out of the sun and the heat. Underrated to the extreme, personally, for me. That's, those are my two cents. And the people mover is nice, too. And uh, Lynn Marie said the stormtroopers were hysterical. Okay, I think I'm caught up on comments. Um... Gosh, okay, so I guess I'll quickly go through the news since I've been, oh my gosh, we've been at this an hour already. I'll be quick, you guys. Um, I just wanted to talk about the updated Disney dining plan. If you guys had any questions about that, it is now included with alcohol, um, which uh, I've seen mixed reviews about. Starting in 2018, the dining plan will include alcohol, and I want to point out that that's for the quick service and the for the standard um, and the... Uh, deluxe plan, that means two drinks a day because if you have the quick service option and the table service, you can get an alcoholic beverage at the quick service place and you can get one at table service. So that's two drinks a day, um, which actually makes it pretty cost effective if you're someone who would order an alcoholic drink anyway since they do run about $8. Uh, the price difference for those who are wondering for the quick service plan, it's a $4.30 difference a day which is not that bad, I don't think. Um, for the standard, it's a $6.24 difference than the previous cost. And then for the deluxe, it's a $9.56 difference. Um, so it's not terrible. I know people who, um, like I, I don't typically get the dining plan, but I don't typically drink at Disney either. 
Um, I know some people who do get the dining plan and don't drink have an issue with that because they feel like they're paying for other people to drink. I do understand that. Um, but for the people who think that they would get a wine, beer, or a cocktail, it's actually pretty, I mean, it's, it's, it's not bad. I mean, Erin Foster has a video, uh, not a video, she has an article on it. So if you want more details about that, I would suggest checking that out. Um, I talked about the music of Pixar Live, doing a live stream of it today. Um, oh, Lynn Marie said, I love the laugh floor. I want my husband to be that guy. Oh my gosh, that guy is so funny. I think my father-in-law was that guy one time. And he was, he was good. I wasn't there, but I heard he was good. Um, uh, and Sharon, uh, disagree that inaccessibility does not diminish Flight of Passage, really does diminish the experience. Um, yes, I... I agree that I don't agree that not everyone can ride it. I should have been a little more specific on that. I think the ride itself is amazing, but like I mentioned before, I do not like that not everyone can experience it. Um, my mom actually would be one of those people. She does. She has several diseases, and she has to use a scooter in the parks, and it's something that she couldn't ride, and it's something I think she would love because she loves Soren. So I completely understand where you're coming from, Sharon. Um, Amy loves the Star Wars dessert party. Star Wars themed desserts and drinks love the Stormtrooper escort to the viewing area. Area Agree that if you're a fan, it's, it's a good idea to splurge on it. Um, and Don also did the Star Wars tour and the dessert party was part of the tour. Oh, that's so cool. You're right. I forgot about that. If you guys haven't done the, if you're a big Star Wars fan, they do offer a tour now. And you know, you, you just, it's, Oh my gosh. Okay, now my brain's spinning because I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, you basically go throughout Hollywood Studios, hear a lot of trivia, get to go on Star Tours, you know, not Star Wars Tours, but Star Tours, and kind of hear about what they're doing, and then it ends with a dessert party, so I'm really glad that you mentioned that, Don. Um, the Hall of Presidents delay, that was just kind of news that came out recently, so I thought I'd touch on that briefly. Um, the whole drama with that is that usually the current president gets a speaking role and nothing had really happened with that. So the rumor was, you know, is there going to be a speaking role? But Disney did confirm that the current president will have a speaking role and his date has been sent set to record. But it did delay the opening of Hall of Presidents. It was supposed to open today, um, but now we know that has been delayed. And Don said kids also get a guaranteed spot in the Dread Jedi Training Academy. I need to tell my brother that because he loves Star Wars and he has a couple kids that would love to do that. I need to tell him about that Star Doers. Thank you for bringing that up, Don. Love that. Um, and whatever. Other 4th of July celebrations besides the Magic Kingdom fireworks. Epcot has Voices of Liberty, which is a beautiful, stunning acapella group that sings American tunes. And Illuminations will have a grand finale that's very patriotic. They'll have a little addition at the end. And um, those are the two like different things that the parks are doing, that um, two of the parks are doing. Otherwise, the Grand Floridian has an all-American cookout uh, from 7 to 8.30 on the 4th of July. And it's kind of pricey though. It's $120 for an adult and $59 for a child. So I think that's kind of expensive. And Sean thinks that Hall of Presidents is underrated. They love it. And that is another great place to cool off and take a break because it's a pretty long um, attraction. And I am all for getting in the AC when it's super hot. And you learn something. I think that's great. And did I touch on everything else? You know, just, the, just that um, Disney filed permits for construction at Epcot. You know, as far as the uh, that rumor and um, the Hall of Presidents, Brian just did a news video yesterday. He talks more in depth about all of this, and he also zooms in on Google Maps, Maps. So you can see where possible construction could take place at Epcot, which I thought was a really brilliant thing of him to do in the video, because then you guys can see something tangible about where, this, where they could build things. But the rumor is a Ratatouille attraction in the France Pavilion, which um, is at Disneyland Paris right now, that Ratatouille attraction. Uh, but, we, but we don't know. You know, these are all just rumors that we hear, and if they turn out to be true, that's wonderful. And if not, you know, that's why it's called a rumor. And Kathy agrees that the People Mover is underrated. You know, you see a lot with the People Mover, not as much as the railroad um, train, but you see a lot with the People Mover. I mean, all of Tomorrowland. Okay, well, 
I talked about everything, you guys. I did not think that I'd get to talk this long, and I'm really happy that we got to chat. So again, if there's any questions that I left unanswered, I will go in and answer them after this. And Sharon reminded me to call my dad back. Thank you. He has this week off, so I have to call him. I hope you guys have a great day. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. Check out touringplants.com, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.